Hi guys, ready for finishing with relative clauses? This video will shed light on the following issues. The first point is when do we omit the relative pronoun? The second one, when do we use whom? And the third one, the use of prepositions with relative pronouns. In case you have any doubts about the use and form of relative clauses, have a look at the first video to clarify some aspects. This time, the examples will be based on my personal experience in an exchange program with the USA in which my students took part too. I hope that all this situation with the pandemic will come to an end and I'm sure you all will retake this type of trips and this type of exchanges which are so rewarding and enriching. So this is my little tribute. Let's start with the first point. When can I omit the relative pronoun? Native speakers omit the relative pronoun when it is the object of that clause. In other words, we can leave out the pronoun if it's the object of that clause. That's the bridge which we visited. That's the bridge we visited. Cool, isn't it? Here, which is the object of the clause. In another example, that's the view which was so captivating. Here, which is the subject and I cannot omit it. If this explanation is not clear, I have a secret portion. If the relative pronoun is followed by a subject, then you can omit it. Let's try with these examples. The place that I love the most is this hectic part of Times Square. That is followed by I, subject, so I can omit it. Whereas in the square, which is shown in this picture, is one of the iconic places in France, which in this sentence is followed by a verb, is shown, so I cannot omit it. Non-defining relative clauses, I cannot omit a subject. The Statue of Liberty, which is one of the most visited monuments in New York, is my favorite one. Or Alice in Wonderland Fountain, which was donated by George de la Corte, was a gift to the children of New York City. Did you know that the monument was created by a Spanish-born American sculptor and friend of Picasso, José de Craft? Our second point is when do we use whom? Whom is translated in Spanish for a quien and it is used in very formal contexts. If the preposition is placed before the relative pronoun, I use whom because it always functions as the object of that relative clause. In a natural informal structures, the preposition is always placed before the relative whom. The girl with whom I am in this picture is my daughter. I was so lucky to be able to share this amazing experience with her, I have to say. The guy of whom he is taking a picture in Times Square is posing strangely. All this explanation leads us to the third point. How do I use relative pronouns with prepositions? In whom or which have a preposition, their preposition can come at the beginning of the clause, like in we used the snow with which we draw the name of our school. Or at the end of the clause, we used the snow which we draw the name of our school with. But when that has a preposition this time, it always comes at the end. I will never forget the skyscraper that I got that view from. When speaking, if the verb in the relative clause needs a preposition, we put it at the end of the clause and the relative pronoun is omitted. For example, with listen to. The music is good. First clause. Second one, Julie listens to the music. 
if I join them in a relative sentence, I would say the music which that Julie listens to is good. And I omit the pronoun saying the music Julie listens to is good. The same use is done with verbs such as work with, go to, come from, apply for, and much more, as you can see in the following chart, in which examples are included so that you can understand this structure a bit better. I would also like to add a specific use of relative pronouns with quantifiers. I often use quantifiers with relative pronouns. Again, in this chart, all of them are classified with examples. These quantifiers can be all of which, most of which, many of whom, lots of whom, a few of which, none of which, and so on. An example could be, there are plenty of bridges in New York, but one of which I really like is Brooklyn's. There are some good sandwiches in the world, but none of which can be compared to Philly cheesesteak. If I had to summarize the main point of this video, I would say in formal structures, we use whom instead of who when there is a preposition before. The flatmate with whom she lives is Dutch. In formal language, the relative pronoun is definitely omitted and then the preposition is placed at the end. Flatmate she lives with is Dutch. Done like that is far more informal. Are you ready? Following relative challenge, is here for you. These sentences I give you are quite formal, so you have to transform them into more informal ones. This is a study about which I was talking. Second one, this is a teacher about whom you were asking. Think about it. As usual, you rock. These are the answers. This is the statue I was talking about, number one. And number two, this is the teacher you were asking me about. Well, time to go. I hope this chart can be helpful for you to retain the main points of this video. Posted with other videos and more material in our webpage Aprenda en Casa Región de Murcia. Bueno, la teacher se despide y os espera en los próximos videos. Y sobre todo, os deseo muchos viajes en cuanto se pueda.